Welcome to my patio office. And you'll probably observe the birds are joining us too. But you know what? I like that. I'm Paula Marie and I am a happy, happy retired educator. I loved teaching. Don't get me wrong. But when I knew I was getting close to that point where I wanted to move on, I started researching everything I could get my hands on about retirement and the retirement process transitioning into that next phase. I even became a certified professional retirement coach so that I could help myself and so that I could help others. And when my last day of work finally arrived and I walked out of that office, and that was in 2018, I was ready. I knew what to expect. I was, like I said, prepared. Today, I'm living my best life in retirement, and I believe you can too, if you are prepared. But if you're not prepared, it's going to be like sheltering in place forever. You don't want that. You know, in some ways, preparing for retirement is kind of like preparing for a trip of a lifetime. And you want to make sure you get it right. So think for a minute about maybe the time, a time when you took a, a really big trip. What were some of the things that you did to prepare? How did you figure out how much it was going to cost? What did you do in terms of figuring out how you were going to plan your time? And did you do any research to help prepare? A few years ago, my son, my husband and his son, excuse me, my husband and his son took a trip of a lifetime. My husband had never been to London, but his son had been several times. Anyway, they decided to go together, and so they downloaded an app on London so that they could get a lay of the land, and they started looking at different things they wanted to see. Now, they're both history buffs, so they decided that that helped them narrow down what they wanted to do. And they ended up deciding they'd see Westminster Abbey together, the Tower of London, the Churchill War Rooms, the London Museum, and so forth. They planned everything out. They had a good budget. They knew about how much it would cost, and they had a trip of a lifetime. Now, of course, things don't always go just exactly as you planned. My husband lost his luggage on the way, but nonetheless, he had a great trip, and so did his son. They were prepared. Now, you know, some have said if we put as much effort into preparing for retirement as we do some of our big trips, we'd be well prepared to live our best life in that next chapter, right? Well, I'm going to get you kick-started. So to help you prepare for your best life, we're going to talk about three aspects of preparation that I think are going to help you immensely. So first, you want to have an understanding of the retirement transition, and it is a transition process. Number two, you want to have a recognition of the lay of the land, or what I would call retirement realities. And number three, you want to be able to use your uh, knowledge of the transition process and your awareness of the retirement realities to develop a vision and a plan for your future. So, let's get started. First, we need to recognize that retirement does typically represent a major life transition. It's more than just a change. It's a shift. We may have worked all our lives and looked forward to that moment when we could walk out of our office and say, I'm out of here, baby. But then suddenly we realize we really are out of there. And for a lot of people, that finality is a major stress point for a lot of people. And as we begin to prepare for retirement, we begin that first step, we end, enter into the first phase of the retirement transition. William Bridges, who is known for his work on transitions, wrote a national best seller. I think it was international best seller. It's kind of a classic at this point. It's called Transitions. I have a copy of it right here. Transitions, making sense of uh, making sense of life's changes. Anyway, he talked about transition as this psychological shift. It's like going on a journey, and that's what he suggests. We leave our old self behind, this death to the old self, 
and our old identity and we move towards a new one and that process is going to take time. So he explained that there's three phases in the transition process most all of us go through. I've been through a few of those, I'm sure you have as well. So the first is the ending and the second is the neutral zone and the third part is the new beginning. And like I said, most of us have had transition periods. You know what this is like. Retirement's not going to be any different. So, here's the ending. When we walk away from work for the last time, what we've known for many years, we walk away from familiar routines, things that kept us grounded. Some of our work relationships, you may think you're going to see them again, but you probably won't see many of those people. Of course, some of them you don't want to see again anyway, so that's okay. Uh, you probably walk away from a sense of identity, titles, roles, and a sense of purpose, your own mission. And of course, you walk away from a paycheck. And that's a pretty big deal for a lot of people. So, when you think of your own work, what are some of the relationships that matter to you? Is there something that gives you a sense of purpose at work? And what do you think you're going to give up when you actually retire? When we go through a loss, we usually feel sadness or grief, and we need time to process our emotions. Well, leaving our workplace is no different. William Bridges described the ending as kind of like a death, kind of like a death of sorts that you have to experience before your new identity is reborn. The second phase is the neutral zone, and this usually involves a sense of disorientation. People want to rush through this stage because it just drives them crazy. One of the bigger struggles a lot of retirees face is a loss of identity. If we don't have our workplace roles and titles, who are we? Also, a lack of structure can be really disorienting, and that's something a lot of new retirees experience. Maybe you've experienced that during the COVID-19 shelter-in-place order. At first, we may feel like we have all this freedom, but then that freedom quickly turns into a sense of aimlessness if we're not prepared. You see, retirement uh, transitions involve letting go and entering something new and unfamiliar. No wonder it can feel so incredibly disorienting. However, Bridges explains that, that this neutral period of confusion is also very important for our growth and the development of a new beginning. You know, think about rituals like vision quests or wandering in the desert for insights. It's going to feel a little bit like that perhaps. And we'll talk more about this phase later. So, can you think of a time when you made a major change in your life that involved a period of disorientation? Maybe you planned the change, maybe it happened to you, um, and you at the same time had this feeling like something was shifting, something was coming out that you hadn't expected, uh, becoming something different, but you didn't know exactly what that was going to be. Well, the third phase is the new beginning. When we approach this third phase, we feel born anew. We've got this new sense of identity, new sense of direction. We may pick up old dreams and discover something that we hadn't thought about since childhood. Uh, we embrace this new life. We have new structures, hopefully a new sense of purpose and relationships, and we're no longer confined to our old roles and identity. You know, I didn't realize it. But um, when I started going through a major transition, three years before I officially retired, um, there had been a mass shooting on campus, and I lost a student and a colleague during that shooting. That was a period for me where I started to disengage, and uh, after the initial grief and loss, um, I still did my best to do my work, but I gave up my position as a department chair, and I spent every free moment of my spare time on weekends and evenings after I finished grading, starting to research what it meant to retire. It was a time where I was starting to shift, even though I hadn't physically left my job. I was searching for a sense of uh, meaning, uh, sense-making, direction. And when I did, like I said before, 
uh, end in 2018, my formal position, I was ready for that new beginning. Now, I'll confess, even though I had been well prepared, I was a little disoriented at first. It takes time to adjust, but overall, I started to settle in, and I've got lots of enthusiasm for my new life. So, before we move on, I'm going to ask you to jot down a couple of your own thoughts about what you think you're going to retire into. It's not too early to start thinking about this. Do you have any idea what your new retirement life could be like? What do you want? What do you imagine it's going to be like? 